Hello, let me tell you about the Libra currency. On the one hand, there is a concept of a Libra currency, and on the other hand, there is the June, written G1, with a brev on the G, which is the first Libra currency in circulation. Let's start with currencies in general, or money. For a long time, I believed money was a compensation for work provided. Therefore, someone who has no money, or not enough, could get some by working more or better. But it's not that simple. To convert work into money, you need a buyer, and that buyer has to have money. Let me show you a little story. The action takes place in a village in Austria in 1932, at a time when everyone was short of money. Let's imagine just for a moment that everyone is in debt. <laughs> I don't need to use my imagination. Please pay attention. A visitor arrives in our village. He makes his way to Zenzer to ask for a room. He hands in a banknote with a face value of 100 and takes his key. Then Zenzer goes to Leschner with the 100 banknote and uses it to pay his debt. Leschner in turn goes to the innkeeper with the banknote and uses it to pay his bill. Then the innkeeper goes to Tony's to buy sausages and meat. Tony goes to Gertie with that exact banknote to finally give her the money he owes her. <laughs> yeah. Then upon, Gertie goes to Zenzer to settle the bill for the room she always uses. This room does not suit me at all. Finally, the customer comes down the stairs, takes back the banknote and leaves. The visitor's single banknote was enough to settle five debts. When there is no currency circulating or not enough, the economy is blocked. Currency can be seen as the oil in the wheels of the economy. You can have a machine that works, like the economy of this village, but is blocked by lack of oil. One of the currency's core functions is to allow exchanges. Shipwrecked people on an island will, for example, choose to use seashells. So if it's not labour that creates money, what is it? In today's world, money is mainly created by bank credits. Out of every 10 euros we use, more than 9 come from credit. Euros in circulation are therefore created by private banks, out of thin air, when a person, company or state negotiates and obtains credit. Money creation, represented by this tap, is currently a private and fee-based service. The euro and other currencies such as the dollar, the Swiss franc, the yen, are debt-bearing currencies because they carry a debt. So, what happens when you repay your debt? As you probably know, you pay the bank the amount of the credit with interest, shown here in red. We know that the bank collects the interest, but what happens to the principal amount? It is destroyed. The debt money was created from nothing, it returns to nothing. As a result, a large part of the money supply we use is due to be destroyed when its time is up. Collectively, we are forced to perpetually resort to credit in order to dispose of money, including governments. The monetary creation of the Junes is very different. It is spontaneous, daily, free, and even distributed among the members. What members? I'm talking about the people who have entered the web of trust, which I will define later. Each one of them sees about 10 Junes appear on their account every day. This daily amount is called the Universal Dividend, or UD. The currency is therefore constantly co-created by its members. It requires neither reimbursement nor interest payments. Let's look at the consequences. Firstly, access to currency is free, and it's the same for everyone. Secondly, the money supply is constantly increasing. Is this a problem? We'll answer that right at the development of the third point. If you don't buy or sell anything, your share of the money supply comes closer to the average. Let's go into a little more detail. Let's suppose that three people own a total of 150 Junes, then receive 10 Junes every day, and neither sell nor buy anything. Three days later, each of them has received 30, and the shares have increased to 40, 80, and 120. Careful, I said received, but the Junes actually come from nowhere. They appear on your account out of nothing, just like when the banker grants you a credit in euros. Twelve days later, everyone has received the same amount, and the shares are much more balanced than at the beginning. The more time passes, the more balanced the shares become. It can also be seen like that. Short comment. On the first day, Brian had one-third of the money supply. 
his share remains at one third. This means that the relative amount of money is constantly redistributed from those who have more than the average to those who have less than the average. And this automatic redistribution takes place without authoritarian intervention. Of course, let's not forget that in real life there are gains and expenses that upset these curves. Every time Aline sells a product of her work, she cashes in some dunes, and her curve goes up. If she makes a big purchase, she may end up below the average. Let us now return to the second consequence. The money supply is constantly increasing. In general, this raises a question. Does it create inflation? We've seen that you need enough oil in the wheels to keep the economy running. But what if there's too much? If there is too much currency, it loses value. You need more of it to buy the same thing and prices rise. Let's be more specific. The money supply is constantly increasing when measured in dunes. So yes, prices in dunes are bound to rise. But it's different if you count in UD, the universal dividend. You know, the amount that appears on your account every day. Right now, it's worth about 10 dunes. But, and that's the important thing, it's adjusted twice a year to keep up with the money supply. It increases with the money supply. Let's make an analogy with the RSA, the index-linked French welfare benefit, which is indexed to the inflation of the euro. What would happen if prices were displayed in RSA, like for this car? As the RSA follows inflation, a price rise of the car would mean that the car value has increased, not that the currency value has decreased. The June and the Euro are absolute units, and prices in Junes and Euros are subject to inflation. In contrast, the UD and the RSA are relative units. There is no inflation for the prices in UD because the UD always represents the same fraction of the currency in circulation. What does this mean in practice? Yes, the Junes sleeping in your account slowly lose their value. But the amounts expressed in UD are stable. The Libra currency is made to circulate, not to be accumulated. I am well aware that it is generally said that inflation should be avoided, and yet I tell you, no problem, all we have to do is display prices in UD. So why are we afraid of inflation anyway? Because it eats into our savings. Indeed, whenever possible, we save to prepare for uncertainties of the future. We give the currency a role of reserve, which it fulfills badly if it loses its value over time. So with the Libra currency, what sense of security is there if the reserve is leaking? Well, the feeling of security comes from the certainty of receiving every day, unconditionally, a UD that always represents the same value. This sense of security and this unconditional universal dividend may remind you of the basic income. The basic income's ambition is the emancipation of individuals. It is about giving them the means to refuse work that is unfairly paid, to stop depending on another person, or to engage in not-for-profit activities, associations, education of children, assistance to relatives, artistic and cultural fulfilment. To achieve this ambition, the basic income must ensure an adequate standard of living. The question is, therefore, what is the purchasing power brought by the Libra currency's universal dividend? If the Junists have nothing to offer or spend their days without doing anything that could be useful to others, there will be a shortage of goods and services and the currency will be of little value. But if their production is considered useful, the currency will be valuable. It is to be expected that some will work less than others because of a limited capacity to work or thanks to a low-key lifestyle. But the purchasing power brought to all by the UD depends on the quantity and the quality of the values produced by the economic agents, especially in the region concerned. So now you're enthusiastic about the Libra currency, and you're wondering how to get into it. To receive the UD every day, you have to enter the Web of Trust, which is a network of individuals whose existence is guaranteed by five members. For the Libra currency's credibility, it is crucial that the UD is only perceived by existing people, with only one UD per person. To guarantee this, each newcomer must be certified by five members within two months. Here is a representation of the web, with my certification links in blue. I am certified because there are at least five arrows pointing towards me. 
and the arrows that point away from me correspond to the certifications I have granted. In order to certify someone, you need to know this person well enough. You have to be able to recognise his or her face, to contact him or her by several different means and, if possible, to have contacts in common. You must also ensure that the person has understood these imperatives, since he or she will be able to certify in turn. This is a region of the network that shows members with few or poorly varied links. This poses a danger to the web of trust, as a small number of ill-intentioned members could develop a subnetwork of false identities. To avoid this, there is a rule of distance that limits the certification capacity of the people shown here. Now, how do you find certifiers? There is a map and directory of members, and a forum with a calendar of events, video conferences for example. Another good way to make contact is to use the June without waiting to be certified. Indeed, you can create a wallet account today. It will not receive a UD because it is not associated with a certified identity, but will allow you to sell goods and services in Junes. And as soon as you have Junes, you can of course spend them. The wallet account is also the way companies can enter the June. They are not certified because they are not natural persons, but they can make exchanges in Junes, which they document in separate accounts, just as international companies which have accounts in several currencies. Wondering what you can buy and sell? There are several e-marketplaces, including this one. I took this image from the fruit and vegetables section. In concrete terms, how do you proceed? First of all, you create a wallet account. For that, you need to install the Cesium software on your computer. You will also need two carefully chosen and memorized passphrases. One will be your secret identifier, the other one will be your password. Please note that the system does not have a lost password procedure. If you forget one of your passphrases, no one will be able to give you access to your account again. Then you follow a procedure to create the wallet account. You receive a public key, which can be used as an ID for your account. At this stage, you can give and receive dunes and thus make transactions, but you do not receive the universal dividend because you are not in the web of trust yet. To enter the Web of Trust, you need to find five or six members who agree to certify you. Wait until you have five promises of certification to move on to the next step, as your five certifications will have to be registered within two months of the application for membership. When this is done, you apply for membership in Cesium and you ask the certifiers to keep their promises. This is also the time to generate a revocation document which will allow you to convert your member account back into a wallet account in case of loss or theft of your passphrases. If all goes well, you are now in the web of trust and your wallet account has become a member account. UDs will appear daily. Please note that each certification is valid for two years. It is therefore useful to ask for certifications as you meet new members, so that you always have five active certifications. In addition, the member account must be renewed every year. This is a simple formality for which you don't need anyone. If you forget to renew the member account on its anniversary date, the payment of UDs is suspended. After one more year, the account can no longer be renewed because to the system you are deceased. It remains for me to specify a few technical elements. I told you that there is no lost password service. This is because there is no central authority just an open group of volunteer developers and users. You are strictly the only person who can access your member account. If you lose your credentials, your dunes are permanently lost. You must revoke your account and start the certification process again. Cesium, the software that you install, is an access point to the data of the web of trust and accounts. It is another software called Junita that records and validates certifications, updates and distributes dividends, makes transfers from one account to another. Cesium and Junita are Libra software. The data itself is stored in a blockchain, that is, a distributed and secure registry. In this decentralized system, each server has a copy of all the data. These servers are operated by anyone who wishes to do so, and their number makes it difficult to falsify the data. Unlike other cryptocurrency systems, the June does not encourage a race for computing power and does not involve excessive energy expenditure. The fact that the software is Libra allows it to be re reused to create a new Libra currency with other parameters. Tomorrow morning, 
a new Libra currency may appear inspired by the first one, but with a different speed of convergence towards the average, or a different frequency of UD distribution, or other rules for certifications, for example. Any team of developers can create the variant they wish. The principles of the Libra currency are set out in the book Relative Theory of Money by Stéphane Laborde, originally published in 2010. If you'd like something shorter, I highly recommend RTM for Kids by Cuckoo Land. That's it for this video. It is accompanied by a series of links that will allow you to delve deeper into the subject.